please welcome to the podcast, Alex Winters. Do you know what? I've just added a year onto her. She's <laughs> nearly 10. I'm so glad you mentioned the high school thing then. I just thought, surely I haven't got my own children's <laughs> ages wrong. <laughs> Typically Mormonism, no sex before marriage. They have something called the word of wisdom, which is uh, you don't drink alcohol, you don't smoke, don't drink tea and coffee. I try to be more emotionally open with my children. Because, because your dad wasn't. Because my dad wasn't. When I had told my wife, I was at a point where I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. You know, it would be like me asking my mum what it's like to be a black man in Britain. Don't ask Nigel. Do not ask Nigel. Come to me. All right. It's, it's as daft as that. Hello and welcome to the Dad Vengers podcast, sponsored by Tonka, because being tough is all about getting out and playing. My name's Nigel Clark and I'm founder of Dad Vengers and host of this wonderful parenting podcast where we explore different aspects of parenting and hone in on the dad point of view. But it's not just about the dads. Mums, grandparents, carers, soon-to-be parents, we want you involved in the conversation too. So wherever you're listening to this podcast, please, please, please subscribe. It's so important because we can only continue to have important conversations like this if we can prove you're out there listening and subscribing is the best way to let us know. So let's talk, let's laugh, let's share the things we find difficult and become the type of dads we really want to be. So today's guest has been an actor in theatre, panto and TV. He's also uh, been a TV presenter and successful businessman. Now, a lot of you will know him through his work on CBBS. Uh, he's a proud father of three and an all-round great guy. I'm really excited to chat to him today because we haven't done as much chatting because we've been in the same circles, but never at the same time. Please welcome to the podcast, Alex Winters. Oh, I wondered who you were going to introduce then. I was thinking, this, this guy sounds all right, doesn't he? <laughs> you are all right, mate. You're more than all right. Can't, can't be me. Can't be me. Oh, no, it is a pleasure to chat to you because, as you say, we've sort of moved in uh, in the same circles, but somehow managed to avoid each other until very recently. Until recently. And it's, it's been, I think it's way overdue because now I consider you like one of my mates. Literally, you are diamond, oh, diamond much, blank. Man. And I'm really looking forward to talking about your journey through parenthood because it's a really, really interesting one. It's one that's um, sort of metamorphosized as you've gone along. You've gone through different stages of it and it's, it'll be interesting for everyone listening to, to sort of hear all the things that you've been through and, and, and experienced really. Well, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> we'll give it a go anyway. <laughs> we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. So um, let's first find out a little bit about your family. You have three children, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I have uh, three kids. We've got old uh, Grace, George and B. And um, it's interesting at the moment because it's very, it seems like very different ages. The, the difference isn't much. They're 15, 13. Uh, and 10 but it, for some reason at this moment in life that gap between them seems quite big yeah it's it's, it's weird and I, i'm not i think it's probably because of what they've got going on in their lives you know especially with the teenagers all yeah, of a yeah. sudden they don't seem oh there's only a few years between them when they were all young you know just sort of group them all together but now all of a sudden I've got these three very different human beings. Yeah, well, there's a lot. You, the, a 10 year old and a 15 year old, that's a massive difference. A 15 year old is soon going to be allowed behind the wheel of a car, <laughs> like, like to, to start that, like. That scares the life out of me. <laughs> provisional licenses and all of that kind of business. Whereas a 10 year old has, is thinking about rocking up to the first year of secondary school. And that's, that's a huge difference in time. A lot happens in those years. So it's understandable that it feels like wow, there's a big difference between them. Do you, know, do you know what? I've just added a year onto her. She's <laughs> nearly 10. I'm so glad you mentioned the high school thing then. I just thought, surely I haven't got my own children's 
ages wrong. <laughs> yes, yes. And that, that comes must with mean... being middle age. And... No, no, that comes with, I'll tell you what that comes with. That comes with there's a birthday coming soon and you're planning for it, must be. That is exact. you have <laughs> nailed it. You have nailed it. But it's hilarious because that younger one, B, she, she plans her next birthday for 365 days, mate. So... <laughs> <laughs> Plan, as soon plan. as it's finished, she's planning the next one. <laughs> That's good. It just, sounds like she's an organised person. A oh, very yeah, organised person. She's, she's no, yeah, she's a person, let me tell you. <laughs> so those, that's the situation you've got right now. Yeah. I want to find, before we find out about them a bit more and about what they've gone through over the last 15 or nine years, um, let's find out about your growing up. Where did you grow up? So I'm a Cardiff boy, Cardiff born and bred. And my my mum is still there. My my dad, um, we lost my dad, um, thankfully, just before COVID, because I think it would have been, he was 82 uh, and there was no, you know, there was no tragedy in it. He'd been ill for a while, but I just sort of thankful that all happened. It, it was literally three months before uh, before lockdown and COVID. Um, but yeah, my mum is still in in the house that I was uh, brought up in. Um, we've uh, we've just been there for Easter to visit her. Um, it's nice, it's nice to go back. But because I've been away from Cardiff for so, 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 so long, lots of years, it's impossible for me to just even drive as soon as I drive past the site that says Close to Company, welcome to Wales. Oh, I feel like a child. I feel like a youngster. And because, you know, because it's the same house, when I'm walking at the pavement, when in, I, I recognise the same cracks, everything is so, is so real. And I feel like, you know, a child again. And it's just, it's, it's very weird. It's very weird. I, I don't know if I would feel that if I had stayed in Cardiff all my life. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's very, very nostalgic. The fact that it is nostalgic might be due to the fact of the experiences you had as a child. You grew up as a Mormon, right? Yeah, yeah, I was um, uh, born into born into it. My parents were converts. In oh, I'm not, I'm not actually sure. I think it would have been the early seventies. Yeah, but it was about the same time that the Osmonds were invading, you know, because all joking aside, mm. the Osmonds are responsible for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of British Mormons, people converting to Mormonism. It's, and you, you think that was because they, the Osmonds were cool and people thought, right, that Mormonism must be cool as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you now, Nigel, there's a few people. Um, Harry Styles, I love him. Yeah. If Harry Styles or Little Sims said to me, start my own religion, yeah. I'm I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna join, Nigel. I'm gonna join. <laughs> whatever you say, guys, whatever you say, I'll be there. But um it was it it there was a lot of uh, time in and they did happen to be big and they genuinely did happen to uh, be responsible for a lot of um converts. Um but also it's it's when a lot of missionaries started uh, started coming over from America, and my mum and dad at the time were living in a place outside Cardiff, the start of the valleys in Caerphilly. And yeah, now I don't know a lot about being a Mormon, but as a child growing up, are there lots of rules that you have to adhere to that maybe other children don't have to adhere to that make life a little bit more difficult? Oh no! <laughs> the, the 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 very end of that question made that very interesting because difficult is perhaps open to interpretation. Totally. Um, I don't know if you realise how well worded that that <laughs> question was because yes, within within Mormonism, no matter what age you are, there are a lot of moral. Um, rules and guidelines um so typically in mormonism uh 
no sex before marriage. They have something called the word of wisdom, which is uh, you don't drink alcohol, you don't smoke, don't drink tea and coffee. Um, and then, you know, church is on a Sunday and, and that is the Sabbath and you do nothing else. You go to church and that's it. So that I think that half answers your question. And then the other half, <laughs> which is in that one word, difficult. difficult. Does that make it difficult for a child? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was embarrassed. I don't mind saying that. I was embarrassed. And so on a Sunday when I was in my shirt and tie and suit, as, as I would be even as a little boy, shirt and tie, driving, it would still be a 20 minute drive from where I grew up. I'd, I'd sort of try and hide in the back of my car so my friends didn't see me because I was sort of embarrassed by it. Um, and then there was things like, you know, I was a really keen footballer, uh, half decent as well. And at a sort of mid-age, when it was really important to me, sort of, you know, 12, 13, 14, all, all the teams started playing on a Sunday. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't play. And so wow. that, <clears throat> that was difficult. Yes. And, and it's, it's something that I sort of, you know. Still regret now? Say, oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. My wife laughs at me and says, you're going to have to get over the football thing, love. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> all those, all those hours of football on a you know, that I missed out. I, you know, I tried to make up in, in other ways with football, but um. So it did seem difficult, I'll be honest. It did seem difficult. Um, and obviously there's, there, there was good things about it. You know, I um, met lots of friends, did lots of fun things. Met but, your wife? Yeah, yeah, which was um, sort of, that sounds obvious, but it's not, because that was in a way, in a way, chance, because she happened to be, the housemate of a good friend of mine from Cardiff who was in Manchester and I visited my friend in Manchester and, and she happened to be a housemate. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, there's, there's, um, it's great things about it. Um, but yeah, there are, there are sort of very strict moral rules and, and, and that did make it difficult um, because in that kind of way, I didn't want to stand out in school. You know, that that's not that's not what I wanted. Knowing knowing the way you felt about it, trying to hide in cars and things like that, did it make the relationship with your parents um, difficult? Did you did did you kick up against it in any way, shape, or form? Because we all know that in parenting, children like to push the boundaries. Children like to say, "Well, why can't I do that? Why can't?" I Jamie does this, so why can't I do that? Man, I've had a lot of years out and, and people have not asked, for some reason, people have not asked me sort of pointed, poignant questions like this. And did it make it difficult? Do you know what? No, because it was what was expected. And we knew there was no point. There was no point in, in, in kicking against it because this is what this family does. Um, and, and, and with Mormonism as well, for those that don't know about it, it's a Christian religion in as much as they believe in, in Jesus, but it is very strict as in it, it, superficially, it can seem just like a, you know, a, a Christian religion, but, but I absolutely liken it to, um, you know, Judaism or, islam um and it's so it's very it's very societal it, it, it it's all consuming as well it is not massive part it is your life not massive part it, it is your life so it's th that question uh, you know i'd be interested to ask someone who was who was jewish or muslim you know growing up um because there was just never that there was never that option because I knew it was pointless. Um, and, and so along with other 
questions and feelings, I just had to suppress it and literally just sort of suck it down because because I knew very quickly that it was tough, you know. And so th- did that affect my relationship with my parents? I don't know. It's hard to know because at the time, that's all I knew. What was it like? What was your parent relationship with your parents like? Do you know what? I had... Um, I had a really good relationship with my parents um, and w- whether it's my, whether it's because of my experience of leaving Mormonism or whether it's just because I'm middle-aged and I'm a dad myself, I have, you know, I have looked back and, and thought, you know, what, what did I feel was, could have been better because I, I think I'm doing it, it, so that I can try and be the best dad that I can be. So I can't sit, I can't sit in front of you and say I have ter- I had a terrible relationship with my parents um, because of religion and because I wanted to play football on Sunday or something. I can't do that. With, with my mum, uh, I was able to be more, I felt like I could be more open with. My dad, my dad just wasn't as, um, wasn't as, loud he was always he was present but not not much of a a, a speaker as such um or, or at least when it came to emotions and 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 things like and things like that so that there, there are when i look back i do think i i wish especially with my dad i wish there'd been maybe a bit more involvement so i Again, talking about football. So in primary school, throughout primary school, I played in the school football team. And we had a really good setup in Cardiff. And so we had proper league, proper season, and this was primary school. And they would rely on parents to help uh, with lifts and drive drive us around. And my mum must have been at almost every game. She was brilliant. And at the time, and I appreciated that, but my dad never came, not once. And I do realise that to a had, single football uh, match. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And there's there's things around that though. So my mum will say, "Your dad never missed sports day," which he didn't. But I also realise there's things like he had a Monday to Friday nine to five job. He was a draftsman. I don't know the ins and outs of what his holiday <laughs> situation was. Yeah, yeah. But but there must have been some matches were on a weekend. There's some there must have been matches that were on a sat. Let's not say a weekend that were on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Oh man, these seem like really simple things, and that's something I've not thought about. So those school games, no, he he never was at, and they would always be a week game. But yeah, when I played, when I played on Saturdays. Yeah, no, he wouldn't come and watch. And just so I've got some context for that, is was mm. he into football? Did he watch football like a? On no, the he team? he he wasn't a he um he was more of a rug he, he was more rugby. Okay. Um, Would he have played, preferred you to play rugby? I did play rugby as well. I was one of those slightly annoying kids. I was quite. I was. I was. That's, you all, know, that's all good. I, I was good at. I was all right at a lot of things. Yeah. And or I had a lot a passion uh, for a lot of things. Um, and so I would play rugby as well, but I can't remember being at rugby games. Exactly. I, I just I, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on there because um it, it's you know, I I I don't want to criticize my dad, but it is a definite feeling I had and I have. I wish he'd, you know, I wish he'd he'd just be more present like that because um you know it i would do sort of school plays and he would be at school plays but then when i started taking when i started taking it sort of more seriously sort of extracurricular uh, and then uh, drama sorry acting and drama and doing sort of outside performances and then in uni It wasn't until I graduated uni and my parents came to my final performance that apparently my dad turned to my mum and went, oh, he's all right at this acting, isn't he? You know, because he'd not, he'd not been involved. 
he'd not been involved. And I, and I do, I do regret that. I do regret that. There were lots of things I did do with my dad, you know, but I feel like, uh, I, I do feel like that church affected that because it takes a lot of your time so he would be out like he was a bishop for quite a few years and a bishop is like the head of that they would call it a ward which would cover you know the whole of cardiff and that that area sort of thing and he would you know he'd be out maybe two three times a week with that so um even even the most staunch of mormon because my you know my mum and a couple of my siblings uh, are, are still you know still active mormons i think that even they would find it difficult to you know refute that uh, because it is it is time consuming and so it takes you away so i do you know yeah i do wish i had i'd, I'd had a bit more more involvement with my dad but those those times i did have i do appreciate like he took me to my first wales football game it was a ninian park and i can remember everything about it um and then he i probably the only other football match i ever went to him with i i spoke about at his funeral it was um me and my brother surprised him and and drove him to wembley from cardiff without him knowing to see cardiff city in the playoff final at wembley and we lost but there was a lovely moment where when um the first goal scored by cardiff was by joe ledley and joe grew up around the corner from us and um, was a, you know was a family friend and um yeah there was just this moment where my dad lost his mind joe scored and i'd never seen my dad like this ever he just <laughs> lost his mind celebrating as as me and my brother did and uh, and this massive guy in front of us huge and he was skinhead i'm not <laughs> huge skinhead for whatever reason just stuck one arm around my dad and just lifted him up and he's jumping up and down and my dad's just i was like what is happening i just couldn't stop laughing and <laughs> celebrating it was just hilarious so yeah you know i have lovely moments with him but i do feel you know I, i'm trying to be a bit more involved that's with, what i was going to say has, my has that relationship with your dad affected how you parent your children i mean it always um, let's say I can't say it always does but it often makes parents um, behave in a certain way because they want their children not to experience or have any of the baggage that we as parents have been given by our parents if that's yeah if, if that's yeah a way to put it, it it's funny isn't it because is that right I, I don't know um, but when my when my son took an interest in football, I ended up being the assistant coach of his team. So you know, <laughs> you went full the other way. You were like, "Oh, you want to play football? Right, I'll coach the team then. <laughs> Let's get some people in here. Come on down. I'm putting an ad in the paper, son. Don't worry, we'll sort this out." <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much, yeah. No. But I just when and whatever they do. I just want to make sure that at all times that I am part of those things so that they don't have that opportunity to go, oh, he wasn't there. And so, you know, we joke about that, but football, he, he's, he's finished playing now and he wants to focus on playing his drums. Oh, well, I got a bass guitar out. So, you know, I try and involve him with that. I, we, we go to music festivals and go to live gigs, you know, with, with the kids this week. In fact, this weekend, I have been waiting for this weekend for a long, long time. The youngest is in her first ever street dance competition. And it's like a, it's like a national thing. And we're all off to Stoke to do it. Oh, and yeah, I will be that dad. I will be <laughs> cheering, clapping. I'm either going to get arrested thrown out or it's just going to be it's going to be ridiculous especially when the battle dances start nigel i'm well up you're there for a so, battle oh, totally. if you ever need some backup if you ever need some backup you shout oh, be there. oh I know. yeah you we'll better come to stoke down. on saturday mate quick <laughs> <laughs> and so and so even even within the jobs that i've done and especially when when i was in front of camera on cbb's I would always try and make sure that there were days that I could go to the nativity or to, 
because I, I don't know if it's a Manchester thing, but flipping neck, there's, there's something almost every term, and, oh, and yeah. often, and often it's you know, it's an hour of. Oof. But I'm going to go, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to yeah, smile and clap and and do whatever's appropriate. So I I think, you know, I think a lot of that was left to my mum, and in in a in a two person relationship and my parents were you know mum and dad and and i'm in a in a mum and dad situation as uh, as well uh, and and i say that because when be, when speaking about a dad i am conscious of same sex parents because we we have friends who were who were both and so you know it's not so much about the m- masculine role whatever it's just about being a part being there because I am a parent my three kids have two parents and I want to be you know I want to be involved so yeah I think yeah I think I have taken things from uh that I have learned specifically from my relationship with my dad and it's been it's been present and it's and it is trying to I try to be more emotionally open with my children because, because your dad wasn't because my dad wasn't and I know my dad was proud of me yeah in fact I know he's proud of me this is really embarrassing I'm only offering that because it is so funny and I know you can appreciate it <laughs> the excitement that my parents had when I got that job on CBBS bless them over the moon <laughs> and my parents are my, my parents are older parents as well so um when my dad died I was 41 he was 83 so like growing up in primary school and going into high school Evan thought my dad was my granddad that says it all because he looked like Bobby Charlton he had a gray comb over yeah but um so you know he was already long retired when I got the job in CBBS and and in his 70s or something or late 60s and his little treat would be uh, a chicken sandwich from McDonald's. That's what he would like. <laughs> so I went with him and we went to a drive through. I'm driving. So I'm on the right side of the car. Yeah. And so I'm at the hatch. You're at the window. Exactly. We pull up. <laughs> and they go, I'm ah! about to make an order. <laughs> yeah, no, no one, no one in the hatch said anything. Because this kid was probably like, I don't know, 17 or something. Oh, and right, right, right. may have known me. Who cares? No, but my dad. Your dad. <laughs> you know, pushes my chest. Yeah. Pushes me back. <laughs> reaches across. Goes, do you recognize my son? It's Alex from CBeebies. <laughs> <laughs> Just was there going. What? <laughs> what, what? 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 And I just paused and I just looked at this person and just went, but I am so so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll on to the next window and just drove on. I just went, Dad. What, what are, are you doing? doing? <laughs> you cannot do that. <laughs> what? Why would you offer that? I said, if they say something, of course I'll I'll respond in a really nice way as I actually would. Please don't offer up that information. <laughs> and him and my mum would do it. My, uh, I was with my mum in Mark Spencer's once, and she disappeared. She was gone. I'm looking for my mum. And, and she's literally dragging this child with the mum going, here he is, told you, it's Alex, it's my son. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a cheerleader right there. Oh, so, so embarrassing. So wow. embarrassing. Wow, good yeah. times, but proud, they're proud. So, That's... <laughs> so I knew he was proud. Yeah. And he, he sent me an email and actually I only just recently found it again. And it was, it was, it wasn't long before he died it was like 18 months or so yeah and he you know he he uh he mentioned in there that he loved me but he would i genuinely don't know i cannot cannot remember pinpoint when my dad last told me that he loved me dude you know I, physically I, said I it resonate face to face. with that because i don't I think i don't think my dad remember. ever has I don't think he ever has to this day. And it's not that I, I know he loves me. I know he's proud of me. I know mm. all of those things. And I've spoken to this. Who did I speak to this? Uh, I was, it was Elliot 
a guy who runs a, something called MFF, Music Football Fatherhood, another um, sort of dad's group and support. And we were talking about it. And yeah, our dads had never said, I love you. Never. And I, and I, and I think it is that, that whole cliche of a generational thing. But I do think as well, he, he lived, you know, a, a lot of his life as a Christian. And, and Mormonism, in fairness to it, is very family oriented. And, and I am literally just sort of giving him maybe, like there may have been occasions where if I was going or somewhere, give him a hug, love you. And he would sort of just say, maybe love you. But like Scott Mills would when he hangs up the phone on yeah, the radio, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like that. And, and I think, yeah, I, I want to change that because he may have said it lots to me as a kid. I can't remember. And, and that's not his fault. That's mine. But also I think that's just how way our memories work. But it's a different, yeah, it's a different generation now. And I think, I think men are way more open to that emotional presence than, than our dads were. I still find it hard. Yeah, I still find it hard because I'm not as arrogant. I mean, I'm a softy and I always have been. My I'm heart on my sleeve and very, I react emotionally rather than intellectually to things. Um, whether that is like, for example, music or sport or, you know, I've cried at football matches and at, at live music or, you know, very emotional person. But I can also feel the similar character traits that I had to my dad that mm. might stifle that. Yeah. And there's moments where I think I could have perhaps opened up, a said bit more. something. Yeah. In, in, in a particular moment. And maybe, maybe I backed off and I'm, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to do that. And in those moments, you, you think you're catching uh, an unconscious way that your dad was that you've absorbed somewhere in the past and is automatically kind of coming out a little bit yeah i think yeah i think so because then when i think of my mum i mean my mum would tell you 20 times a day and still does yeah i love you thank you know but very sort of open very open but i take you know i judge those relationships separately the one with my mum to the one that I had with my dad and obviously being being male uh, as a dad I, I'm trying to think okay well what you know I want to take more from my dad I want to and yeah maybe it is that I, I get those things from my dad I get a, you know a few I get quite a lot from my dad um and and I am I am trying to be aware of it because I don't, I don't want my kids to be able to say these things. Cause I know at the end of the day, we can only do so much. We're never going to be perfect parents. Um, and our kids as, as I did, I'm sure forget and don't acknowledge or realize a lot of things as well, but I am trying to, I am trying to learn from my relationship with my dad because it it is very different to now you know so you know I would get a smack backside you know smack bum and and just so basic things like that which you know clearly I wouldn't I wouldn't hit my children but just trying to be aware of how I speak how because I have to work hard to uh, control my patience yeah and I we find all do. Hard to, yeah. we all do do, do we though? I don't know. Cause I always feel like it's taboo. Cause if I feel like if I, in just saying, I have to work hard to control my patience. I feel like that people are going to interpret that as he's some kind of angry man, which. Neither of us I, are. <laughs> no, I don't think I, I, I can I mean, I can be, and I can have a, and again, temper. That's another word. We, in this house, we don't shout. We don't rage. And I've never had that relationship with my wife either. Um, but I think out on the street or in other situations, I could lose my temper maybe. So as an hour, an Oscar ceremony, I might walk up onto the stage and, <laughs> and, and slap someone. I can't promise. That's why I remain silent about the whole thing until now, 
because I honestly, hand on heart, um, I don't think I'm as good a person to say, I wouldn't, wouldn't have, have done reacted. that. Yeah. yeah, it was wrong. Yeah, and there's, that's, where, that's what people don't want to hear, don't they? Yes, it was wrong, but I can't promise that that wouldn't be me. And I would have had to have worked hard to control that. So in that sense, it's the same as my patients. You know, I, I do have to work hard rather than just going, oh, whatevs, and just walking out of the room that my children are in. I'm trying hard to sit and listen, even when they are just talking rubbish to you. you know? <laughs> One of the most difficult skills, like that patience. And I, I wouldn't hasten to guess that there are a lot of people listening right now who would be like, yeah, patience is the biggest, the biggest thing, the most difficult thing. Because it, it, it comes back in so many stages as a parent. It's like you go through your why stage or you go through... I don't know. Um, they're trying to explain this new game to you on the on the computer that's Minecraft, and you have no idea what's going on, and you're a bit like, "Well, hold on, I, I'm not about this. This isn't me." But you have to have that patience to stay there and listen it's, and be there. For me, it's the bickering. Oh, <laughs> it's 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 the bickering, because yeah, George could be explaining something on whatever Xbox game to me, and and maybe I'm just switching off in my brain because I'm like. It's not that important, but I'm 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 going to look like I'm interested in trying to. Okay, lovely, great. But where I really lose the patience <laughs> is is where, especially like you're in the car, or you're in you're all in the room, and they are bickering about absolute nothing, like two flies up a wall, and and I know I did that. I'm absolutely sure, and I'm like, why why are you? And, and then I do feel sorry for my mum and dad because I just think, oh, man, they did that with five of us. I mean, and I just think, oh, that, what a nightmare. But that and that's where I do have, you know, sort of understanding and love and forgiveness for my parents, because I realise now that those moments, those bickering, we all have as parents. Yeah. And we are all <laughs> experiencing that battle with patience uh, and you know, like, why are you bringing this to me? This is, this means absolutely nothing, kids. So leave me alone as I watch interior designs with Alan Carr and crack on. But you just can't, can you? And no. You have to sort of listen for a bit and then just go, is this necessary? Were you both a bit unkind? Okay, let's, let's try and Mediate. work harder on speaking nicely. Okay, off you go. When really, you just want to go, oh, piss off <laughs> <laughs> that internal parent thought <laughs> the internal yeah, parent thought that you're absolutely. not allowed to say but everyone has it in there and when when is it going to come out there nigel when, when is it going to happen when when you're at the pub with them and they're like adults and you can then say it because they they don't live in your house anymore <laughs> now kids all three of you sit down <laughs> be your 21 Grace, you're 28. I've been saving this up for a long time now. <laughs> Piss off! I want to be there for that. Yes. I want to be there for that, please. <laughs> I'll be over at the bar with a pint waiting for you to come yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Definitely. Love it. We are so happy to have Tonka as our sponsor this series. Basic Fun's Tonka collection is packed full of fun vehicles for kids who want to get out and get tough with their toys. So dads, you've got no excuse. Grab that mighty steel classic truck. It's time to head to the sandpit for some tough play. So something I wanted to touch upon that I think would have been quite difficult for you, and you mentioned it before, was leaving the Mormon faith while being a parent and having a partner who's in the faith as well. Because had you discussed wanting to leave um, with your partner, how did how did it how did it, it's it, it's a, quite a story, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, it's a story. It's something that obviously I've thought an awful lot about, um, and thought about whether I can help other people. Because I don't think, uh, I don't think you, you general, you know, bloke on the street or person on the street would sort of understand because, um, 
again with something like mormonism or or a very strict religion um it is all consuming it is your whole life what age were you when you were when you left oh this was eight years ago so my, i was in my late 30s 30 something so yeah, late 30s yeah so you, you'd have thir- and you were born you already said you were born into it so that's 30 yeah. something years of yeah. living a certain way and then to i was a missionary it- as well wow i served a mission you know as in the the musical have you seen the musical the book of mormon uh yeah i have actually <laughs> yeah so i was you, you know i was an elder for elder that- winters <laughs> For those yeah. who haven't seen the show and don't know what that is, do, do a quick explanation of what a, of, of a missionary is. Well, it's very simple. It's generally those American young lads that come and knock your door with their badges on, white shirts and a tie. And often they're a short Welsh person. <laughs> and that was me. And so, my, my wife did the same. So you'd been doing that for 30 years. And when you left, is it, is it kind of like overnight? No. Was it right? No. So I had a, I had a met. There had always been. I, 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 uh, I use the old bookshelf uh, analogy. And, you know, some of the suspicions, problems I had were books on these shelves and then the shelf broke. And since I was young, I had quite a few quite a few books on those shelves, you know, um, especially with homosexuality, because being involved quite a, a young age in, in the arts, and, and it sounds cliche, but it's because it's true. I had, uh, I had quite a few friends and, you know, best friends, good friends who were gay. And I remember speaking to my mum about it and it just, it just didn't seem right to me. It just didn't seem right that it, 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 it was wrong and that a all living God would create someone who in his sight was wrong. I, I just, just didn't get it. Cause I've always been a liberal. I was always a liberal Mormon anyway. Um, and I always been a liberal thinker. So from, from a young age, I was caught up in the, And this is me talking about my experience. I'm not judging others, but the brainwashed obedience on me because I thought that it was the right thing to do. And that's why I stayed in so long. But also because mentally it is the biggest wrestle and fight um, and it, but you know, it pretty much led to a, a a breakdown to get out of because there's so many fears. So I was at a point when I had told my wife, I was at a point where I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. There's, you know, there was thing because the internet is the biggest <laughs> is 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 the biggest catalyst for, I think, the downfall of quite a few religions, and you know. Don't believe what they might say, but the numbers in Mormonism have dropped massively, massively. And when you are always taught to look away, or if you have questions, ask us, you know, so which just doesn't make sense, but you go along with it. Yeah. You know, it it would be, you know, it would be like me asking my mum what it's like to be a black man in britain don't ask nigel do not ask nigel come to me all right it's it's as daft as that and that seems really daft but that is exactly what don't we we will we will tell you and so it's like a blink thing so you don't look and your muscle memory and you as a, a drummer and a rhythm player it's exactly the same so if i ask you to reenact the first half of stomp you're going to know your movements whether it's your hands yeah, your feet yeah. and you're just going to do it instinctively because you've done it for years and years 
And it's the same with thinking and feeling. You just suppress or you just don't, you just don't, you just don't, you just, and you trust. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I found out factual things, and this is the, this is the thing, when I found out factual things about lies, robbery, the treatment of black people, in Mormonism yeah. was a massive, a massive thing for me. Um, and again, the, 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 their views on homosexuality, just te- things that I did not know, Nigel. And if you'd have confronted me, which I was confronted with one thing when I was a missionary, I just didn't know how to act because I didn't know it. Because if you don't know it, you don't know it. So I just, yeah, so I knew I knew it was wrong, but then my last fear was, do, am I going to lose my family over this? Because people do. And sadly, one of my very good friends, still one of my best friends ever, he, unbeknown to each other, and we're a similar age, I'm a few years older than him, we were going through the same thing. He was also married uh, and had children. We were going through the same thing, we discovered, chatted. Anyway, we we then sort of took the same path and he he lost his wife and his children. And, it, and you know, his marriage. Uh, he's in a great place and, you know, has met someone else and still sees his children and it's great. But, so there is that, no matter how much you know your wife or husband, there is always that fear, what if? And I'd been away, I'd been away doing panto, actually, in Sheffield, I think it was. And it it built up, and this was going on for two or three years, and I'd not spoken to my wife about it. And uh, I came back, and it it pretty much led to a breakdown. She, this one night, just went, sit down, what is going on? Because I just couldn't hide it anymore. And I just literally broke down, collapsed, and told her. Um... And then I happened to be going away for two days with work. And I, I tried to leave with as, as much as I could for her to read, to listen to, to understand. Because I said to her, you know, there's no, there's no direct pressure on her for me. This is just how I was feeling. And that's all I was trying to deal with at the moment. Because it is, it completely changes your life. But it breaks you as a person. You, you you find that you're actually finding out who you are again. Who you are. Yeah. Um, totally, totally. Um, and I came back from those days away and she just went, I'm with you. I'm with you. And so we, you know, went on that journey together. And that's been really hard. I think the big change from those first years it's always going to be different because your kids are always a different age so it would always be different you know parenting a four five six seven year old to a nine ten eleven twelve thirteen year old but all of a sudden i'm discovering what my morals and beliefs are and and sort of um and things that maybe people wouldn't think about so if you're brought up in a religion where no sex before marriage, you know, and chastity, Um, no alcohol, no tea, no coffee. I, I believe that you have to empower your children and help, help them and be open with them and show them and talk to them so that they can take control of these things. So you, you show your child how to ride a bike so that it becomes something that they can then control and is not seemingly dangerous per se it's more in their hands so all of a sudden now we're we're trying to navigate how do we talk uh how do we talk or how much do we talk about sex sexuality um alcohol things that maybe someone like yourself or other people just take for granted it's just it is what it is and you but for us uh a quick shift and for my eldest it was it was quite interesting because she remembers being being in church have you had those discussions with her absolutely from the off and what what, what have what has she 
thrown into the conversation that has made you think, wow. Are there moments where you've gone, I so wish I was as clued up as you were, you, as you are oh. at that age? Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, uh, I, absolutely. Absolutely. She, she will... Hmm. She recognised, this is how I sort of keep, can keep confidences here. She recognises and has done for a few years when people are racist, saying racist things, homophobic, you know, she recognises things like that and things that we, we shouldn't just accept or say nothing to. And... And there's some occasions where I think all of us, no matter what colour skin, no matter what sexuality we are, we sometimes just remain silent because it's just easier. Already, she is not and is saying something and saying, you can't say that. That is not a nice thing to say. And that, that, that makes me feel like I... You know, my wife and I have one parent in because I'm like, oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so she understands what we've been through to a point. Um, and she embraced it as well. But also, I think they are different children from what they would have been. And I'm not saying better or worse. because no, again, no. That's not, just different. That's not it, it, just different. And yeah. I think they... I think they are, you know, better equipped to deal better. with. Yes. Yeah, they are. I think they are. And again, that's, you know, these whole conversations, I, I try to be careful and respectful because I don't, I don't want to af purposely offend anyone. <clears throat> but if we go, if anyone is going to talk about religion, more often than not, it comes with things that, really if you look at it are you know are a negative and have a negative effect so it's no coincidence for example that in salt lake city in utah where the the mormon church headquarters are almost monthly they're dealing with young people and, and i mean young teenagers early 20s lgbt plus kids who are dying from suicide because of because the mental trauma that they're going through from yeah the cogn yeah. it's cognitive dissonance it's it's the worst dissonance yeah. and you can't convince me otherwise the it, the only reason they did that is because that they, they felt unaccepted yeah by by god and their society so in in that sense Yes, they are better equipped. Of course, I can see positives. But to just try and equip my child with words from a scripture, it's not, it's not enough, I realise now. It's not enough. And, I, yeah, I'm just glad that they're, they are the, the children that they are growing into. And they absolutely are. It could be a generation thing. It could be our situation. But they are absolutely more switched on to human needs i think and an awareness a lot more than i was dude i could talk about this with you forever and ever but we've been going for a while now and i'm so sorry no no you're all good i've loved it i've absolutely loved it what i want to do though is touch upon two things before we go firstly we like to ask all of our dad vengers uh, a question and the question is this yes. so have a think Oh, I if know. You, Come on. You know it, yeah? So I've, I've if, heard the podcast. Oh, yes. I listen. <laughs> if you could have a dad superpower, what would it be and why? Okay. I am going to be Ooh. absolutely honest, okay? Because yeah. I, I thought, what, what, what would be, you know, the really worthy thing to say? What would be a really <laughs> nice, you know, that I can meet all my children's needs, that I can... No, I Go want the ability to just switch off so that it's just silent just like that 
So when it's all going on around you and it is that bickering and oh, you just want to read your book or whatever, or it's just you're feeling overstimulated <laughs> as often happens <laughs> in a smaller house with five of you, I just have the ability to go zip and it's just peace. Ah, oh, that's a great so superpower. Good. There'll be a lot of parents so out there thinking <laughs> that is the one they want. That is definitely the one they want. The other thing I want to know is what you're up to. You've got your own podcast, haven't you? Where, where can people find out what you're doing? Tell us a bit about your stuff. I have. So, yeah. So I've got um, a podcast called uh, the Gig Stories Podcast. Um, and it's on all the usual platforms. Uh, and it's uh, me and my friend, Chris, uh, who just love and adore live music. And we've both grown up going to loads of gigs, seeing loads of artists. and um you know we just really miss being able to go to live gigs over the past few years and so we thought come on let's talk about it if we can't go let's talk about it and now we go to them we talk about them and we also um speak with all kinds of people from journalists to musicians to all, all kinds uh about you know their love of live music and what it means to them so yeah you can check out the gig stories podcast Dude, I have checked out a few episodes. It's definitely worth having a little listen. And I've got some gig stories for you one day, sir. Yes, I'm going to book you in. Alex, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been lovely to chat. Um, oh, my, my pleasure. Thank, thank you for thoughtful questions. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You take care, mate. Thanks a lot. Wow, what a guest. Uh, I could have talked to Alex for hours and hours and so interesting to hear about growing up with a different faith, parenting with a different faith, and then changing. Ooh, the Avengers podcast. So there you go, another episode done. But what did you think of it? We would love to know. Leave us a review or a comment on Apple Podcasts or on social media about this episode or the series as a whole. And don't forget, if you want to be first to hear brand new episodes, make sure you subscribe by your preferred podcast platform. To find out more about Dadvengers, make sure you head to our website, dadvengers.com, where there is information about our live chats, our dad walks, our blog posts, and more. We'll see you soon.